A year later, Marjorie moved with the children into a much bigger house in Lower Heswell, called Gatencroft. It had enough room for them all and their domestic staff, including a cook and a gardener. But the most important thing for the children were the huge gardens. There's a shock in store for Gemmell when he returns to Gatencroft and the gardens he last walked in 60 years ago. <laughs> That's it, is it? <laughs> is that it? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Because when and you were here, th this conifer hedge obviously was not here, no. and the garden stretched way down there. It's only a tiny bit of what it used to be. The whole of that expanse where we played and did everything. But if you look back at the house, that's the same, isn't it? Yes. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. And all the filming we've got, you can Im imagine, the people pouring out of the house and coming down here, onto here. And then this was tennis lawn, an open lawn of the croquet, whatever you like. And then as much lawn again beyond, and then a hedge, and then a, a large vegetable garden. Comparing with the past, I mean, it's so small. And, uh, of course, it was here that my poor, poor brother Donald was photographed on the lawn with his sister playing with dolls, which was a, a perfectly innocent pursuit for a small boy and girl, but a crime for the photographer to capture, which never should have been done. On the right at the top lawn was the seesaw, and that, of course, was a centre of interest, especially when we were very young. We had a lot of fun with that. And there's one picture of the gardener, Hume, uh, going round and round with the motor mower round the seesaw just for fun, to give us fun to play with the children. And our um, Labrador retriever, he was quite happy to lie there all day if we put him on the seesaw. And the other one that was his friend uh, just did it with him. If my friend can do it, I can do it. In the 1930s, Marjorie took her camera with her on many family outings throughout the Northwest. Among scenes from New Brighton, the Lake District, and Landudno, here's Chester during the King's Silver Jubilee celebrations in 1935, including a short section of early colour film. In the years between the wars, the prosperous middle classes, families like the Alexanders, spent their summers here at Triada Bay in Anglesey. Some of them owned the houses around the bay, living together as a family, enjoying the outdoor life, and renewing friendships among their particular social circle. Marjorie's film show, Triada Bay was the perfect place for the Alexanders to enjoy summers that seemed to have no end. For the children it was a haven of swimming, sailing and just having fun in a resort they made their own. The family became expert sailors and entered many of the races held here by the local yacht club. 
Gemmell was recently amazed to discover that the family's boat, Dot, was still being sailed here after all these years. He'd last seen her in 1939 and believed that the boat had been lost at sea sometime in the 1950s. It looks spanking, doesn't it? That was the last boat we had and got it into a really good sailing boat. It was in a terrible shape when we got it. Everybody got a shock when the old boat that we, that we had as youngsters suddenly started winning all the races, first or second every time, it had always been last or next to last. It was quite an exciting thing to do that as youngsters, to take an old boat and get it into the front line of, of racing. The Alexanders had a holiday home at Triada. It was a chance for all the family to get together and a chance for Marjorie to ensure they learned to swim and to sail. Our two aunts were very good sailors and they taught us and uh, my father, although he couldn't move him about in a boat properly with a stiff leg, two fishermen on the, who lived here, the Roberts brothers, they helped us in every way with our sailing, fishing, um, really getting familiar with the sea in every way. Marjorie had another reason to come to Triada Bay. Gemmell and his brothers began the early part of their education at a boarding school here. For the boys it was an exciting outdoor life and the emphasis was on games. The Alexanders had a belief that life had to be lived and it was their motto during the endless summers here. This was my second home in my childhood because I was at school here and a boarding school. So I spent a lot of my life here and I knew the locals, there weren't many of them, I knew them all and they knew me. We were on good terms. For the wealthy Alexanders, life was like a page from the Swallows and Amazons book. There were frequent expeditions for picnics, organised and filmed by Marjorie. But this is one of the rare times Marjorie ever let someone else use the camera. Nobody knows who took these shots of her as she makes her undignified way down a steep cliff to a favourite picnic haunt called Copper Mine Creek on Anglesey. When we picnicked, we, we picnicked properly. We decided where we would go, how we would get there and back, and built up a vast supply of food and drink. And we were quite prepared to haul it quite a distance. I mean. We weren't dismayed when the transport stopped and somebody said, we're going to picnic over there, over that mountain or over that sand dune or something. And we'd all go toting our biscuit baskets and bottles and things and settle down for a picnic. It was all done very properly, wasn't it? Even to the extent of the, uh, washing up. I mean, you were washing up in the in streams or in the in seawater as well. Yes, I, I think one picnic near water always, whether it was a stream or the sea or whatever. I don't think the Alexanders put dirty dishes away back in a picnic box and took them home to wash. 